Hello there, it's me, Adam Paul Morgan, on It's Morgan. How do you do? How's it doing, you all right? Yammo, 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 all right. Very weird. Had a bit of an accident last Monday. Well, yeah, I did have an accident, yeah. I was reaching for something in my pocket, and my mobile phone was in there. I reached for the thing that was in the pocket, dragged the mobile phone out, and the phone landed on solid concrete from, let's be generous, probably from four foot drop. Crack, smish, bang. Phone's still working. In fact, this is, I'm recording onto the device now. Hopefully, hopefully it all works unky dory But yep, cracked phone. So I thought, okay, time for a new phone. And I was like, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Maybe I could get that screen replaced. Oh yeah, okay. 90 pound to replace a, and I actually found out what the phone is. It's a Motorola G31W. Now for any techno buffs out there, will probably know that I'll strike their hand and go, eh, it's got a good screen, but the things do. Yeah, but it's got a few features, the Motorola phones, that work well for me that you can't really find in other phones. Like turning the camera on really quickly, getting the torch up and running, or the flashlight up with a flick of the wrist. That works perfect for me, and I think the battery's really good. In fact, I haven't charged it since last Monday, and I'm still using it now, a week later, after the smash bang wallop. So, £90 to get the screen repair or to buy a new phone. Now, you techno wizards out there, mobile phone experts, I bought the Motorola, again, because I like the features on the Motorola. Motorola, what was it now? E22, I think. It was cheap. It actually cost less to buy this phone. Now, I've got, all right, I use vouchers. This phone that I'm using for phone calls, sat nav in the car, things like that, photos. At £95, something like that, and that was with the screen case and the actual phone. Sim free, get the old one out, stick it in, bish bang, what a bing bang do. And here we go. But the phone is slow as anything, not as quick as or responsive as anything else. It's got a nice clean phone, and I thought that'll do until end of the year when the sales are on, and I'll probably get a new one then. But how's your week doing? Mine was lovely up until Tuesday. Tuesday for me was back to work. It's nice to see people give way. So I'm just watching people give way. Ah, oh, to learn the driving reversing. The amount of cars I see where one of the light one of the reverse lights has gone. Better get that sorted. If the old Bill is in a bad mood that day, they'll have you. Do it yourself. It's easy. I did it. Back to work for me on Tuesday after four lovely days off. Me and the wife just relaxing. Went to Wales, Bournemouth. Hard a log cabin for a couple of nights. Oh, it was lovely. We went for, we only took for two nights, but obviously made full days of it. Got there really early on the one day. It was incredible. It was nice and relaxing. And I, we both said it felt like we were there for a week. A whole week we were there. And it was really good. Nice and relaxing. And what made it even more relaxing was the log cabin. Had a sauna and a steam room. A shower and everything built in. Which was nice. Now I'm not really into the sort of relaxing it's always go but you know what? I want to relax the sauna was nice but you had to have it on for four hours prior to actually getting in it we wasn't in the cabin long enough for that because we went out done stuff hikes meals walks on the beach all that jazz anniversary weekend I don't know if that was this weekend or last weekend because it was actually the 20th which was two days ago when I'm recording this, that is. We still go out on the Monday. Yeah, nice and relaxing. But I enjoyed that steam shower. It was like a steam room. You can get yourself into this like little pod and it steams up. For health and safety, recommend that you don't have any more than 45 degrees Celsius. I cranked that up to 60. 
and all the dead skin was coming off and the sweat was pouring out of me. But I looked into it, it sort of both got the similar effect. I'm no expert, someone will come along and say, no, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong. Someone else will come along and say, no, it's for this. But obviously saunas are like a dry heat, like the desert and a camel. Whereas the steam room is more of a tropical cl climate. This is a bit more moisture. And that was relaxed. I had a little stall in there. And I must have been in there in the steam thing for about three times. And it was one of these fancy showers where water could come at you from about 12 different angles. It was nice. And then I got back and I was like, yeah, with just like a bog standard electric shower, I was like, yeah, I want one of them. So I don't need a PlayStation 5 or the new Xbox or the new Nintendo. A nice shower. Ooh, yeah, nice shower. Something to wash your doodly bits. That'd be more sensible. But this particular shower, of all the things that sort of say, all right, technology's moving on, you can actually connect your phone to the shower by Bluetooth and you can have the music playing speakers that were built into this thing and I was like what? do we need such a thing and apparently yes we do and it was so nice so relaxing it was all so good but as I was saying it was very good just to get the crap out of the skin and the pores and things but I felt so good after so relaxed so chilled out so maybe I do need to start like doing these chill out things and stop being a height at 110 percent drinking a whole big stanley flask worth of caffeine so i'll switch to tea just to calm it down a little bit but maybe i couldn't come off that and just uh, start drinking water i don't drink beer anymore it was nice it's always nice to have a bottle of red wine it should really be a glass or two not me no it has to be the whole bottle and i don't drink and drive and, and that oh you are allowed limits you are allowed so many units of alcohol or whatever i'm just like no because i can't be asked to measure it and i've probably said a thousand times before i can't just have one drink i've got to have 12. so i don't drink a drive full stop and i like to do the holidays where i drive a lot because we're going out for a meal when this goes out it would have been yesterday because out on the monday we're going out on the sunday and we're going out for a meal and the wife's like have i told this story no way you're hearing it again like oh we're gonna tax it so you can drink uh, no, I'd rather save the 20 plus quid. I'll drive. We can have a nice meal. You can't have a go at me for being drunk for whatever reason. And I can have a glass of wine when I get back. Happy days. Jobs are good. You can take a picture of your food as it comes out. That's something I said, and I've upset a few people with this. Everyone takes a picture of the food and puts it on the socials. But imagine if it became a trend and it must be amongst some sick people or people who have to research this of people who take a picture of their stool sample every time it plops in the toilet take a picture of it and send it to a doctor if you have to for medical reasons which i think that's relatively acceptable but if it's for people joking around oh this was last night's chicken tikka masala oh this this is the Tuesday night uh, burrito night and put that on your Facebooks and Instagrams and whatnot on Twitters if you've still got your blue tick I never had one in the first place and I don't intend on getting one you know if you do that take a picture of your poo and put it on the socials after a very very nice meal you might lose a few people which is not necessarily a bad thing anyway I've got to talk about an event I haven't got to, but I'm going to talk about an event that's going to happen on Sunday for the British people. The testing of the emergency thingy me do. I don't know what's quite going on, but there's going to be a test. Everyone's mobile phone is going to go off and go, Wah! make some sort of noise. I thought I'll know more on. It probably won't work. British government are doing it, so it won't work. Now, I think it's good 
for these things. And the, yeah, I, you know, from Britain, we haven't got this. It's been coming in too. But I know for, we got family in Texas who have the hurricane and tornado warnings on the phone. Now, I think that's great, but we've not necessarily got that here. Um, obviously, with what's going on in the world, it's going to be asteroids and nukes. Basically, horrible catastrophe. I don't think it's going to be for weather. You never know. Global warming. Might get more tornadoes and heavy snow and things like that. But I think it's a good little system to have just in case. But it's just like a little wee, wee, wee. I, I don't know what the noise is. Now, I think should have, um, I think everyone's phone should play certain music when there's a disaster coming. It's like if we are about to be nuked by countries that want to nuke us, it should play Europe, the final countdown, because we're all fucked. That's what it should do. Um, and I don't I haven't thought really for what else we could do, but I think for the all clear, it should be, um, I can see clearly now, the rain has gone. That's the all clear song. And because we're British, what else we do? I think of loads of different scenarios. If there's an asteroid coming, um, to hit the earth, the, um, Aerosmith, I don't want to miss a thing. That'll be good. So it'll calm everyone down. Every, it'll just, you know, if it's just a wee, a siren going off, it'll just panic everyone. But certain songs, like Aero, if, they were, if we're going to be hit by an asteroid, take cover. If everyone's phone just starts playing that um, Aerosmith, I don't want to miss a thing. Everyone just starts playing that. Take shelter. We'll just kiss your ass goodbye because we're all buggered anyway. I think that'll cheer us all up a little bit. All these nasty sirens. But actually, while I'm thinking on subjects of natural disasters, it's going to start raining soon, and I know why, because every time I start recording one of these things, the, w the weather suddenly changes and it all just hits up. Well, at the moment, it's quite nice, but I normally record these in my car, on my break, while I'm at work. Very heavily stressed while I'm on a break. In case the solicitors, I only do it on my break, so I can do what I like on my break. Don't do it during working hours. But here's uh, something interesting. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, I do this on my break. I'm probably going to start doing it at home. But the interesting thing is, it's starting to warm up a bit. And it's a nice day today. And it's going to warm up even more. And obviously, so if I'm shouting, I don't know, Nobody does anything in the UK for Groundhog Day. Or we've always got something going on in the supermarkets that's not really us. Awesome. One of my regular whinges. It's going to get warmer and hotter. Sat in a car with the windows up. And I'll keep the windows up because people don't want to hear me rattle on. And I suppose you don't want to hear the ramblings of a random nutter. Well, then again, you do because you won't be listening to this if otherwise. So, yeah, it's getting hotter and hotter. So, I've got to come up with a plan to do two minute sketches and segments of the podcast then edit them together now it's getting warmer or I could just record at home a bit more relaxed or we'll go back to Wales and sit in that sauna and record from there while I'm in the nip it's alright I could do it because it's audio and get away with more right now my hair is a mess I can get away with it why? because I'm only recording the audio That's how strange. Oh, a bit of gaming talk. A little bit of gaming talk. Games are really getting boring now. And I don't know. They're just... Oh. I think I'm waiting for Breath of the Wild 2, Tears of the Kingdom. I think that's what it is. So if you're on Game Pass, you're getting a lot... The, the games are just... Ugh. Pick up, two minutes, go, done. That's it. Get those reward things in. It was like the PlayStation ones. I just go back to the same games over and over. Star Wars Battlefront, that's my go to shoot em up, pick em up. I get less of a. In fact, I don't think you can use a voice chat on there, unless you're in like a p private party thing. But anyway, I don't get shouted abuse at by people. But I do like the stories that the PlayStation sort of exclusives have got. They're just better. But the thing with Xbox is that, you know, it's come out with the, the Tokyo Drift, or not Tokyo, I'm thinking of Fast and Furious. The game, 
Tokyo something or other. You know what I mean. I've played it. It's, uh, it's all right if you like that sort of thing. But it plays better on the PlayStation than it does on the Xbox. Yeah, Xbox own it. What the fuck? I don't, I don't get it. It should either work the same or better. They own the company. Like, what the fuck has happened to Halo? It's crap. I know there's all this talk about who makes the best exclusives. PlayStation or Xbox. The way I see it at the moment, and this is me. I'm going on gamer talk because I've got... I'm, I know it's my hobby, it's what I like to do, but I'm just going to rattle on. The way I feel, Xbox at the moment is more quantity over quality. There's loads of games on the service, the majority of them are just crap. And my opinion, I've, I've played them, but I'm not 100% invested in them. And I can always tell by what I want to do when I get home, when I do actually get time to play on these things. And you have four by four that's never going to go off road. So I just went past aggressively. What do I want to do when I get home? And you know what it is? It's not video games. It's going out of the garden, feed the bloody birds, water the plants. Then I'll have a go on this, that, and the other if I'm not going to run out and do anything. So it's sort of would you like to have, I don't know, 700 or whatever it is, 300, or I don't know what the actual thing is crap games or would you like to have a couple of games that are actually good that you will invest your time in the only problem is I've got to spend 500 plus quid on a new console 500 pound for a games console oh get a PC get a PC just I can start reading more I think that's the trick forget these things just start reading more Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that's what I'm reading. Bought the box set, even though I had the box set. Picked up a book at one of these Swap It things, and it had the... I thought it was just the first book, but actually it was the first four in the trilogy. Then I bought the box set, got the box set, and I looked at it, and I was like... Ah, blah, blah, blah. That's the entire collection there, I'm buggered. So I gave it to my father-in-law and he's listened to the TV show, listen to the TV show, watch the TV show or whatever years ago. Never read the book, so he's quite good. So everyone's a winner. It's all good. So what can we learn? Always listen to your instincts. If you want to take a picture of a poo, take a picture of a poo. Just remember the consequences. And as soon as you get in, from your holiday blues just remember you're doing it for the money oh well do the email the email 0121 it's not a phone number 0121 it's morgan at gmail.com if you're listening to this or watching it on youtube by all means check out the, the um the podcast thing so you can listen to it here there and everywhere but either way i'm happy you're listening to me can send an email asking me advice on anything not like an agony art. i think if i do it like an agony art i'll do it for free for you anyway i'm adam paul morgan this is it's morgan have a good one